Hi, good people. It's Amy from Saber Salvage Scent. I hope you're doing well. It's a beautiful day in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, today, I am talking through some decants that were kindly sent to me by friends. Um, this whole series for the next few weeks will be focused, in, focused on um, generosity and friendship and people who have been so kind to send me decants this year. I have I'm so lucky to have a lot to work through and I'm so excited to share some of these with you. It is so fun when people do this, uh, trade decants or just send out of the kindness of their hearts um, because it allows me to try a diversity of things I would never be able to afford to try. Um, even if I had all the money in the world, it shares experiences. There's no way I would have been able to experience all these scents or would have known about them all. So. Today I'm going to talk about um, decant sent to me by two people. One is my friend Erica, who I met through this channel. Thank you so much. So we swapped scents, um, and she is just awesome and sent me some really like a really interesting diversity. And then um, I might have mentioned in another video that uh, the wonderful Sebastian Furtado sent me um, a selection of decants. I think that they were all. Guerlain, um, met him through, um, doing a collaboration around Guerlain. So I'll click that video below. Um, thanks to, um, our mutual friend, Memory Flow, uh, Florian. We'll also click his, uh, website or his channel below. He's amazing. Um, so I'm going to talk through, um, first Erica scents that are just four completely different scents. And then I'm going to talk about the Guerlain's that Sebastian scent. Um, so, um, I have four here from Erica and they are just absolutely all different from one another and have been so exciting to try. The first I no longer have with me, but I'm going to tell you about it. Um, I, for the longest time, wanted to try Guerlain's um, Aqua, Aqua Allegoria, the Herba Fresca. I don't think they're making that anymore. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. It has become kind of pricey where some of the Aqua Allegories you can get pretty cheaply on discount sites. This is not the case with this one and it just had not made it, um, I was not able to, to purchase it. And she kindly sent me a large, like a one of the travel perfumes. Um, and I loved it so much. I love Aqua Allegorias. They're not for everybody. Some people that like know old school Guerlain and I think really love the heavy hitting qualities of their perfumes sometimes are put off by Aqua Allegories, but they're made to be colognes and really light and often to be refreshing and really intended for kind of sometimes warmer weather. I love them for that. And I think they're some of the classiest versions of that. Um, this was just amazing. Um, I will click a video below that's about some of my favorite Guerlain Aqua Allegorias, um, but uh, some of them are very herbal. One of them is called Limon Verde and it smells a lot like grass and lime and I just adore it. Um, this Aqua Allegoria Herba Fresca was like one of the best I've experienced and so much so that I used the whole bottle over about eight days when I was in Paris. I wore it every day. Um, I sometimes layered it with other things, but at some point every day I wore it and it just was, it smelled like springtime. It smelled a lot like mint. If you like fresh mint and herbs, you'll absolutely love it is my guess. If you don't like mint, you won't. Um, I loved it and it was a perfect uplifting, like start my day off scent. Um, and I often was um, exploring gardens when I was there, so it was just perfect. So thank you, Erica. I burned through the whole thing. I absolutely loved it. And someday I will acquire a full bottle. Um, so wore that until it was gone. Um, another scent that I don't have here in front of me, but I'm gonna put information below is Ginger Ale by, De by gosh, I almost just said Demeter, who does make a ginger ale scent. This is a ginger ale made by, um, Ganache Parfums. So a lot of you will know that house because they made some really interesting gourmands. Um, I, I personally have had a hard time connecting with the house because it's open and closed many times. And um, yeah, I just think, I think it's hard to be, an, uh, I think it's hard to be a niche perfumer, frankly. Um, but uh, I, a lot of the scents that I've tried did not work on me. 
But there was this whole series that um, he did that was focused on different sodas. Um, and all of those worked well on me. Like I absolutely loved them. Some people love, there's a lemon eclair scent. Some people love, there's a few strawberry scents and he was known for doing some really great coffee scents. None of those, they either didn't work on me and or I had something similar, but the whole line of soda scents did great. And so like my absolute favorite is one called ginger ale and I have a full bottle and I even have a backup bottle. And since it has been discontinued, it was just released, I think in like 19 and it was discontinued months later, it feels like. Um, so I acquired two of those bottles and it is one of my absolute top five summer scents. And so, um, I am passing that on to a friend uh, who loves those kind of scents so they can experience it. So I'm grateful. And, and it's such a coincidence. Erica didn't know that I love that scent and sent it to me. And it's crazy because it is, uh, you know, like uh, from a perfume collector who has hundreds of scents and probably have smelled 5,000 plus, it is one of my absolute favorites. So what a small world. Um, I'm going to share with you two that I have here that are really, really interesting um, and very different um, from each other and from the other two. And one is by Papillon uh, Perfumery. I have wanted to try something from them and I haven't yet, so that was really exciting. This is called, is it Dryad? Um, so I'm gonna spray this. I'll tell you what I think. <clears throat> one second here, sorry. All right. Um, This, gosh, does this remind me of my childhood in good ways? Um, for those of you who don't know, my mom, uh, her signature scent was Halston, which I think compared to the scents of today, it was a really gutsy, gender bending perfume, very oak mossy, but really green and um, just had that funky, like kind of hippie quality without being too dirty or skanky, um, but being really, I think, perfectly unisex. This has a, a similar quality to me. It reminds me a little bit of Paloma Picasso's perfume as well. I definitely get vetiver. And I'm not sure either of those two scents had vetiver, but through this Dryad by Papillon, I get, I get a lot of green vetiver and I get a little oak moss. I really, really, really like it. I don't know that I need to have it because of the fact that those other scents that I own kind of quench that thirst for me but I'm really excited that a modern day perfume house is making something like this. It does feel like a more modern version of those scents that I've talked about. And if you like vetiver and if you like green things, I bet you would love it. So this is Papillon's uh, Dryad. I hope I'm saying that right. Let me know if I'm not. Really, really cool. And then one of the scents, or actually two that she sent me, the ginger ale scent and this one were both unmarked purposely because she wanted me to have a reaction and then, then kind of divulge what it is. So this one I wore for the first time yesterday and I'm gonna read to you what I wrote because I just was like, wow, this is such a weird combo um, and interesting. I really, really liked it. Um, and it was so funny because later I asked her what it was and some of it was true. It was really interesting. Um, I wrote chocolate, cocoa, tobacco, um, then I wrote honey and powder, candy. And I did miss maybe perhaps the most important note, but I got a lot of the, <laughs> the rest of the composition. So the scent is something I had never, never heard of. And it looks, I'm guessing it's a niche house. I'm gonna have to look into it because there's only a few reviews on Fragrantica. But she had, I believe, taken in that I liked strawberry. And this is what she defined as a weirdo or weird strawberry scent. And I agree, it is weird and it's awesome. Um, it has got so many of those things I talked about. So it has cocoa, um, it has uh, spices, um, it has, you know, a powdery feel, it has I think it does have a little tobacco, I forgot to check. But on top of that, here are some of the notes that I did not write down. Um, spice, orange, resin, marigold, wood, 
sandalwood I wrote down as well. Sandalwood definitely comes out. But then, of course, once she, so I, I wrote her yesterday asking, what is, you know, what is this? And at first she didn't remember. And then she was like, oh, it's the weird strawberry scent. Um, so the name of it is, it's by a company called Maria Lux. And I don't know if it's pronounced Mogadas. That's the way maybe American would pronounce it. Or it's Majadas, M-O-G-A-D-E-S-S. -S. Imagine all those things combined with the freshness of strawberry. Not a super jammy strawberry, but like a fresh strawberry. And Richard Kiko mentioned this recently in a video and it cracked me up. Occasionally, instead of just something having strawberry, it will say as a note, big strawberry. Does anybody know why? Anyone in the perfume community, can you answer? Why sometimes does it say big strawberry instead of just strawberry? What makes it big? I don't know, for real. So, indeed it's strawberry. Big is relative, perhaps. And it's cocoa and spice and orange and sandalwood. It's really cool. And this is one that I would love to have. Um, it's super highly rated on Fragrantica, though it's not reviewed a lot. Yeah, but yet there's a few reviews that are like, I think people are like, this is just too weird for me. I'm like, but not for me. I love it. So thanks, Erica. These were so fun. Um, two are absolutely like lifelong loves and this big strawberry scent. I can't wait to wear more. Um, okay, so along the lines of Guerlain and the Aqua Allegoria I just talked about. The wonderful Sebastian Furtado sent me a beautiful package full of Guerlain scents. I'm going to talk first about two that aren't represented here and I should have brought the bottles because they, I either own it or they've been purchased. So I was dying to try Apres Londe. Um, this was like six or eight months ago. I hadn't tried it. It was briefly discontinued and I was really bummed. It was supposed to smell like, you know, the earth after rain. And um, I tried his decant and then a month later I went to Paris and I bought the bottle because it is so beautiful and it really does smell like the Guerlain version of what it would smell like after rain. And what do I mean by that? It's powdery, floral, beautiful. And then it has a little bit of, I can even smell like the soil a little bit with it. And it definitely has that ozonic rain quality. It's gorgeous and it's on the market again if you all want it. So I'm not going to talk through that one today. The other one I'm not going to talk through is he was kind enough to send me a decant of Lair Bleu. It is already one of my favorite fragrances. I have many, many versions of it through the ages. I absolutely love it. I am passing that on to a friend who has not tried Lair Bleu, but loves other Guerlain classics. So Sebastian, somebody else will absolutely love it. Thank you for sending it. So I have four left here I'm going to talk to you about. And I think I briefly smelled these. Um, actually, no, I have not purposely. Okay, so I'm looking at them and realizing, yes, I have not tried these yet. So I'm gonna try them on camera today and react and let you know what I think of them. Um, so they are, I should show you, he makes the most beautiful decants. Um, so I think there's a mix of kind of like old school Guerlain and newer ones here. So this first one is old school. It is Jiki, which I believe is one of their first, like most popular scents, um, really old. I will put the date below. So that's the first one I'm gonna spray here um, and react to. Gosh, I'm excited. I love Guerlain. For those of you who don't know, I will, I will link some of my Guerlain based videos below. Holy Hannah, wow, that's interesting. Um, Jicky, let's talk about it. <laughs> this feels perfectly unisex to me. I think it was maybe marketed to women. Super lemony. Mm, this is good, I love this. Lemony and herbal reminds me a little bit of, I'll tell you some modern things it reminds me of, or more modern, um, Clarence Odin Masson. Um, Caron's Eau de Reglisse. So lemony herbal is what I get. I wonder if there's even some lavender in here. That's a guess. I did not look this up. Um, 
really love Jicky, really would love to have it. Smells expensive. And my guess is as it dries down, it's gonna get a little powdery. Um, really, really great. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you, Sebastian. I'm so excited to try that. And that is one that I'm gonna have to own eventually. Um, oh, okay. Another one that's not quite as old, but not new either. This is uh, Habit Rouge, the EDP. I had mentioned when he kindly offered, like, what would you like to try? Um, I said that I was honing or kind of like developing my nose around some of the Guerlain male marketed scents. I don't have as many of them. And I, you know, often when I do experience them, I, I think it's, you know, I think gender with perfume is just a crazy notion. I think if you like it, you like it. And I, I know a lot of men that wear female marketed or women marketed uh, Guerlain scents and they smell amazing on them. And conversely, um, some of the male marketed scents I have smelled by Guerlain, I absolutely adore. So I'm really excited to try Habit Rouge, which is like one of their absolute classics. So I am spraying this on a scent strip. I don't know if you can see Happy Rouge. Ooh! Oh! You know, Guerlain Odd, the Guerlain DNA, you know, a percentage, whether it's a small amount or a large amount that runs through all of their scents or most of them, is a thing. Like, this smells related to Jiki. Ooh, this is gorgeous! Oh, I love it! Again, really herbal. Again, I think I smell lavender, I'm not positive, and citrus. This one smells a bit more green than Jiki. And a little soapy, and I love it. And again, I don't get why this is a, ma a male marketed scent. I get that a man would smell amazing in it. I think anybody would smell amazing in this. Oh, it's beautiful. I get really like a total soapy quality from this. Absolutely love it. Gorgeous. Now, there's one here that I'm not even positive if it's a, if it's a Guerlain scent, because I've never read about it. I have no idea if it's old or new. It says 190 ons, which means 190 years as far as I know. I am studying French right now, if I remember anything. Um, that means 190 years. So I don't know if this is like hearkening back to a classic scent or if it is an older scent, I have no idea. I will um, add some information below. In the meantime, I'm going to authentically react to it. I am spraying it right now. Oh, is this powdery. Mmm. This one I smell tea or vanilla, I feel like. Oh, is this beautiful. I've never read about it, which makes me think it's Trey Cher. Super expensive, is my guess. This feels like, it feels like a DNA, it feels like it has Guerlain uh, DNA again. It smells powdery, it's got a bit of that herbal stuff, but to me this smells a little more like vanilla and tea. I wonder how right or wrong I am. Anyway, that is gorgeous stuff. Like that, I have not smelled anything exactly like it. Although I do own Tiazura, which is a Guerlain vanilla tea scent. These smell different. This again has a, a soapy quality. Man, it's gorgeous, I absolutely love it. Can't wait to learn more about it. If it's Guerlain at all, I'm not sure. I'm gonna find out soon. Some of you might be able to tell me actually. Last but not least is Metallica. I've been dying to try this. It is also Trecher, or Aussi, as they say in French. Um, so again, one of the great things about swapping decants is you know his collection is somewhat different than mine and I would have never been able to try some of these likely so I'm so grateful especially as a person who's crazy about Guerlain um all right I am going to spray this I am kind of like I'm excited but also a little scared and I'll tell you why um metallic scents I feel like are are, are not a new thing but people have been marketing and and making new ones recently and a lot of 
people love them and I tend not to like them. So I'm, I'm fascinated by if I'll like this or not. And if it has a metallic nature or if maybe Metallica just means like the same way if somebody named a bronze or gold scent that it has like a royal quality. I'm not sure. Oh, wow. That's fleshy fruit to me. I'm, I'm surprised that was not. Oh, this has the, the powdery thing. But this smells, I get a lot of fruit in this one. And again, I haven't read the notes, so I could be completely wrong. I get like, I'm gonna spray this one on my skin actually. Metallica by Guerlain. Oh, wow. At first I get like, is it peach? Apricot, orange, not sure. And then when it starts to dry down, it smells a little more like pear to me. Maybe orange flower. I'm not sure, but I really love it. Oh gosh, thank you, Sebastian. So four really interesting and very different from one another, yet I feel like they have a strain running through. I think all four are Guerlain scents, not positive. Jiki, Abit Rouge, I know those are two Guerlain scents. Metallica, I believe, is Guerlain. And then something I've never heard of, 190 on or 190 years. All of them are amazing in different ways. So thank you so much, Sebastian. You are the best. Um, I would love to hear from you all watching. Have you tried any of these? How do you feel about Guerlain? Have you tried any of these from Erica? They run the gamut. They're so interesting. Have you tried especially this uh, Moja Des, um, weird strawberry scent. Would love to hear from you. All right, cheers. Have a great day. See you more or see you soon with more decants. Bye.